What's up guys? My name is Vishwan and I'm the OT Dude. In today's video, we will talk about how you can teach your child how to use a pair of scissors. Before we jump into cutting, how do we know if your child is ready to use a pair of scissors? Or what are some prerequisite skills, or let's just say, skills that we first need to teach and establish before we jump into cutting? In today's video, we will discuss the developmental age for cutting, the prerequisite skills that needs to be established before we start cutting, some activities that we can do to help teach cutting, and some things that we should always remember when cutting. The developmental age for cutting. Usually, when kids start showing interest in using a pair of scissors, that's when we start teaching them how to cut. At two to three years old, the child usually snips using the scissors. At three to four, he is able to cut simple shapes. At ages four to five, he is able to cut a square and other shapes. And five to six years old, he uses the scissors to cut. The prerequisite skills for cutting. These are skills that we first need to teach and establish. Number one, the child should show interest and understands the concept of how to use a pair of scissors. This is when he or she enjoys tearing paper, and if he or she doesn't show any interest, then don't force it. Number two, the child should be able to maintain the correct grip when holding a pair of scissors. The thumb should always be over, and not this way, but this way, and the arm should be adducted or tucked against the side of the body, like this, when cutting. Not this way, this way. Number three, he should understand the concept of grasp and release, open and close. Number four is bilateral integration, the use of both sides of the body, the left and the right, at the same time. Number five is sitting balance. Number six is upper extremity strength. Cutting is a very tedious task, so strength and endurance is very important because the child needs to hold a pair of scissors and paper or anything that he or she will cut for a very long period of time. Number seven is hand separation, the ability to use these three separately and not these two. And number eight is eye-hand coordination. In today's set of activities, we will need pom-poms, beads, handheld puncher, straws, play-doh, pair of scissors, a box, chopsticks, tweezers, tongs, highlighters, a paper plate, construction paper, and index cards. Activity number one, sitting on a vestibular or therapy ball, a stool, or a chair without a backrest. This is to engage and help strengthen the core. Activity number two, weight bearing on both upper extremities. Ask your child to do activities in a prone position and make sure that he or she is bearing weight on both arms. This is to build upper extremity strength. Activity number three, ask your child to pick up different size objects. In this case, I'm using small, medium, and large beads or pegs and some pom-poms. And I'm also using different tools, a tweezer, tongs, and chopsticks. This is to teach the concept of grasp and release, open and close. It's also important to note how he or she grasps onto the tweezers or tongs or the chopsticks. In this case, I'm gonna use a pair of tweezers. This is the um, more challenging one and the more difficult one to use because it has a smaller surface area to hold onto. The important thing here is the use of these two fingers, the index finger, the middle finger, and the thumb. It's sa the same position when you're holding a pair of scissors. So make sure that you're doing this when you're picking up small objects. In the same way, when using a pair of chopsticks, make sure that he or she is holding it at the tip, not here. It would be a little bit more challenging or um, not functional. It's better to hold the tip and ask him or her there. And lastly, if it's too hard to use a pair of tweezers or chopsticks, maybe you can start with a pair of tongs. Again, ask him or her to hold it this way, or you can hold it this way. For activity number four, we will use clothespins and a box or cardboard is fine. So we will teach again the concept of grasp and release, open and close, at the same time, bilateral integration. What's important to note is how we will position the fingers on the clothespin. 
the thumb should be over, the index and middle finger should be under. It's similar to the position when holding a pair of scissors. So again, one hand is holding onto the box while you put the clothespins. Again, it's same and similar to when holding a pair of scissors. For activity number five, we will need index cards and single hole punchers or handheld punchers. You can buy this at your local bookstore, the national one. <laughs> now ask your child to hold the index card with one hand and the other hand will hold the puncher. Ask him or her to just punch and maneuver or shift the position of the paper and just keep on punching. So this will teach again the concept of opening and closing, hand strength and grip. Again, the thumb over the index and the middle fingers under. And at the same time, bilateral integration and eye-hand coordination. For activity number six, you will need a key ring or a coin or any small object. Ask your child to place it at the pad of your little finger and the ring finger like this while doing the activities. For example, clothespin activities. Make sure that's in, that's in place and it doesn't fall off. Picking up small objects or even tweezer activity. For activity number seven, you'll need a cardboard, a folder, a thin book or anything that could fit in between the arm and the body, ask him or her to tuck it in and make sure it doesn't fall down while doing all the activities that we mentioned so far. This is to train the proper position when cutting. For activity number eight, we will need construction paper or any paper that is a little bit thick. So ask your child to tear the paper in the middle, no matter what the size of the paper is. Even if it becomes small, ask him or her to tear it in the middle. So he can make an indentation if he wants to. Ask him to fold it and try his best to follow the line in the middle while tearing the paper. This will train bilateral integration and eye-hand coordination as well. And a little bit of fine motor skills. Ask him to try his best to follow the lines or the indentations that he made when tearing the paper because it follows the same concept when we start using the pair of scissors. We will have to follow the line when cutting. For activity number nine, we will use Play-Doh, some straws, paper plates, index card, and construction paper. This is the only time that you will start using a pair of scissors. Make sure that you've done the first eight activities that we've discussed so far before we start using one of these. Also use highlighters or colored pens to make different lines on the paper to, so that it would look colorful and fun. Now usually, I start off by using a Play-Doh. Now I roll it up into a snake and then one hand will be holding the pair of scissors and the other will hold the Play-Doh. Now this provides a very good proprioceptive feedback when cutting you'll feel that you're cutting through it. So it's a good way to get used to the sensation of cutting. And after we've done this a couple of times, next we'll use straws. It's good to put lines or dots so the child will know where to cut it. Ask him or her to cut through those lines. After using straws, this is where we start using paper plates. Again, this provides a very good proprioceptive feedback when cutting. Just ask him or her to snip around the plate first. Now, when he or she is able to snip around it, ask him or her to cut through the paper plate. After cutting or snipping on the paper plates, ask him or her to cut or snip through the index cards, like this. And after snipping on index cards, that's the time that you will use bigger index cards. And after cutting through index cards, we will snip through construction paper. And after that, that's when we start snipping through bigger sized construction paper. 
For activity number 10, we will use construction paper. This is a half-sized one. You can use a whole-sized construction paper. Put lines. And then to assist your child first, tape the construction paper on the wall or at the edge of your table. And then ask him or her to cut it. This will assist in holding onto the paper while cutting. Or you can just start cutting by holding onto the paper. Things to always remember. Safety is everything. Now remember, when you're teaching your child on how to use a pair of scissors, safety should always be the number one thing in mind. Make sure that the pair of scissors that you're going to use is child-sized and the edges should be blunt and not sharp. And it's also good to have a pair of scissors that has this. It makes a scissor sort of retractable. It helps with the grasp and release when your child is using and cutting. Next is position is very important. Make sure when he or she is cutting, his body is not slouching or that his arm is not winging and it should be tucked against his body when cutting. And lastly, make sure it is a positive experience for your child. Cutting shouldn't be a stressful experience. It should be something that he enjoys and he is challenged to do. That's it guys. If you have any suggestions on my next video, please comment it down below. Also contact me through my email. And if you like this video, please smash the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more content like this. Thank you. Have a good day.